after studying this module you shall be able to know about the concept of ethics in criminal investigation, the practice of maintaining balance between science and ethics and lastly the significance of ethical issues for successful criminal investigation. Forensic science is the application of scientific knowledge and principles to the resolution of legal disputes whether criminal or civil. This explanation being large and consistent across forensic science textbooks, manuals and professional establishments is reasonably expansive. Whenever any crime is committed, investigators are usually confronted with the assignment of determining the responsible individual for the crime as in many cases the identity of the perpetrator is unknown. Law enforcement agencies specifically detectives within each organization are called upon to investigate the crime with a view to bringing the offender to justice by efficacious responsiveness and prosecution. The investigator becomes a collector of evidence as well as a chief character in giving the investigation an appropriate direction which ultimately determines the accomplishment or otherwise of the investigation. As an evolving field of study, forensic science and criminology are at present multidisciplinary in nature. It should be noted that the practice of forensic science is not for everyone. Given the unpredictability of the issues under litigation, the severity of the risk factors and the authoritative personalities which dominate court systems globally, forensic scientists can be subjected to a great deal of stress. Forensic science reassures effectiveness in police and correctional services by ensuring that the truth of their actions will be known which at the same time discouraging frivolous litigations. Forensic science and criminology are driving forces behind the continued improvement in the safekeeping attitude of mass private property predominantly as the civilized world faces the threat of terrorism. Next is science and philosophy. The term forensic science incorporates a comprehensive range of forensic disciplines each with its own set of expertise and practices. In other words, there is extensive variability across forensic science disciplines with regard to techniques, procedures, dependability, types and numbers of probable errors, research, general acceptability and published material. Some of the forensic science disciplines are laboratory based whereas others are based on expert interpretation of observed patterns. The forensic science community consecutively consists of a host of practitioners including scientists in the field of chemistry, biochemistry, biology and medicine laboratory technicians, crime scene investigators and law enforcement officers. There are very significant dissimilarities however between forensic laboratory work and crime scene investigations. A full embrace of the scientific method and its underlying philosophy is the best way to ensure competent methodology, findings, reasoning and interpretations. This requires forensic scientists who objectively and skeptically employ the scientific method. Unfortunately, the criminal justice community as a whole to include forensic scientists remain uninformed regarding what the scientific method is and what it intends. But those individuals engaged in scientific work hardly study the scientific method. To be sure, those engaged in research are expected to pick up the scientific method somewhere along the way. For 
the most part scientists don't study the implementation of the scientific method. Philosophers of science think about the scientific method. Basic research scientists use it to generate new knowledge. Applied scientists typically study the knowledge that the scientific method has managed to accumulate. This ultimately works against the best interests of the forensic scientist who ordinarily does not learn much about how undiscovered information is brought to light. The failure of the scientists in general and of forensic scientists in particular to understand how knowledge is acquired and applied leads to abuse. Next, we will be studying about maintaining balance between science and ethics. The scientific method is a way to investigate how or why something works or how something happened through the development of hypothesis and subsequent attempts at falsification through testing and other accepted means. It is a structured process designed to build scientific knowledge by way of answering specific questions about observations through careful analysis and critical thinking. Observations are used to form testable hypothesis and with sufficient testing hypothesis can become scientific theories. Eventually over much time with precise testing marked by a failure to falsify scientific theories can become scientific principles. The methods and culture of scientific research enables it to be a self-correcting enterprise. Because researchers are by definition creating new understanding, they must be as cautious as possible before asserting a new truth. Also, because researchers are working at a frontier, few others may have the knowledge to catch and correct any inaccuracies they produce. Thus, science has had to develop means of revisiting provisional results and revealing inaccuracies before they are widely used. Most technologies benefit from a solid research foundation in academia and abundant opportunity for peer-to-peer -peer stimulation and critical assessment. Review and appraisal through conferences, seminars, publishing and more. These elements provide a rich set of paths through which new ideas and suspicion can travel and opportunities for scientists to step away from their routine work and take a longer term view. The scientific culture encourages cautious, precise statements and discourages statements that go beyond established facts. It is acceptable for colleagues to challenge one another even if the challenger is more junior. The forensic science disciplines will profit enormously by full adoption of this scientific culture. Next, we will be studying about ethical standards in forensic aptitude. Forensic scientists should be impartial voices in the arbitration of facts. They should strive to be devoid of emotion during their examination and immune to pressures when rendering conclusions. Forensic scientists, after all, are not interested in the outcome of a case as they are not advocates for either side. This is their primary value to any forensic enterprise. However, it is necessary to add some confusion at this point. Forensic scientists are advocates for the evidence they examine. They are advocates for objective examination and good scientific practice. Subsequently, they are also advocates for their findings once they have been rendered. While some professional organizations 
have a code of ethics, they frequently lack any explanation of consequences for violating the code. This is an addition is a significant problem because it theoretically indicates a lack of consequences for the unethical expert and removes the ability of the organization to sanction transgression in a substantive or expressive manner. This essentially gives a clearance to the unethical examiner and efficiently rewards corrupt behavior. While some issues are very clear in their ethical status, other areas may be less well defined and are far less clear in terms of being ethical or unethical. Forensic scientists have a great duty to make sure that the result of their analysis not only comports to the evidence, but that the results of their analysis are ethical and pledge to ethical standards. These standards relate to all areas of professional practice, including any expert reports or testimony, and also to commentary provided to the media or other public forums. There is often great pressure placed on forensic scientists to provide results in one way or the other for whatever side may employ them. It is their sole responsibility to ensure that they remain impartial regardless of the pressure and to provide an analysis that benefits nothing but the facts of the case and the decider of those facts be they judge jury or panel. A code of ethics goes a long way to helping forensic scientists remain impartial and ensuring that their analysis is helpful to the trier of facts in no other way than it decorates an unblemished representation of anything happened. Additionally, an ethical standard provides cover for ethical scientists from all others, especially those who would see them alter their opinion out of fear or favor. Next is ethical practices in criminal investigations. Forensic examiners must recognize the ethics, practices and perspectives of science including the scientific method. Training should diverge from dependence on the novice like transmittal of practices to education at the college level and beyond that is based on scientifically valid principles. In addition to learning a particular methodology through a lengthy apprenticeship or workshop during which a trainee discerns and learns to copy the skills of an experienced examiner, the junior person should learn what to measure, the associated appropriate population statistics, biases and errors to avoid, other threats to the validity of the evidence, how to calculate the probability that a conclusion is valid and how to document and report the analysis. Among many skills, forensic science education and training must provide the tools needed to understand the probabilities and the limits of decision making under conditions of improbability. There are countless different types of forensic scientists with various investigative and legal value and educational experience. The describing quality of forensic scientists is the possibility that they will be called upon to present scientific findings under consequence of perjury in a court of law. Scientists then should be prepared to explain to the court that their findings mean and how they came to them. Anyone who cannot or does not do this is not a forensic scientist. The distinction between a forensic scientist and a technician must also be made where a scientist is educated in the scientific method and uses it to interpret results. Next is utility of ethical values in criminal trials. As 
society becomes more complex and more technology driven court of law which are called upon to make important decisions about the lives and financial interest of others require increased guidance in areas where they have no knowledge or expertise of their own the history of the courts use of expert witnesses mirrors very closely the history of the availability of technical expertise to assist in that decision making process there will probably be always tension between trial advocates and expert witnesses of all disciplines the reason is that each of them speaks a different language and each of them is regarded as an expert in what he or she does it is important for the expert scientists to appreciate that professional trial advocates do not take kindly to other pretended experts interloping on their field and exhibiting another expertise before the adjudicators or judge call it professional overconfidence but in a courtroom trial advocates tend to regard themselves as the only experts who should be seen and heard there is also the problem created by the fact that trial lawyers or the whole are not comfortable in their disciplines admission of expert evidence carries with it the implication that the jury are not equipped to decide the relevant issue without the aid of expert opinion and thus if it is strongly admitted it is likely to divert them from their proper task which is to decide the matter for them using their own common sense next we will be studying about the responsibilities of the expert whenever a court requires scientific or knowledgeable opinion to assist with establishing the likelihood or plausibility of a theory or to support an argument being made by counsel forensic experts are employed expert testimony in criminal courts has a long history the necessity for expert witnesses are more qualified than the court to express their opinion regarding certain matters it has been said that it is not unreasonable to ask that the expert witnesses who are called upon to testify either for the prosecution or the defendant know what they are doing given everything at stake in a trial in other words the expert has a responsibility to be knowledgeable adept and to generally refrain from the vice that is ignorance of their subject matter otherwise they are essentially unworthy of offering expert opinions and testimony of any kind these principles which to varying degrees had already emerged elsewhere at common law are of sufficient significance in the development of the concept of an expert's duties to warrant full quotation expert evidence presented to the court should be and should be seen to be the independent product of the expert uninfluenced as to form or content by the exigencies of litigation an expert witness should provide independent assistance to the court by way of objective unbiased opinion in relation to matters within his own expertise an expert witness should state the facts or assumptions upon which his opinion is based he should not omit to consider material facts which could detract from his concluded opinion an expert witness should make it clear when a particular question or issue falls outside his expertise if an expert's opinion is not properly researched because he considers that insufficient data is available then this must be stated with an indication that the opinion is no more than a provisional one in cases where an expert witness who has prepared a report should not assert that the report 
contained the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth with some qualification that qualification should be stated in the report. If after exchange of reports an expert witness changes his view on a material matter having read the other side's experts report or for any other reason such change of view should be communicated through legal representatives to the other side without delay and when appropriate to the court. Where expert evidence refers to photographs, plans, calculations, analysis, measurements, survey reports or other similar documents, these must be provided to the opposite party at the same time as the exchange of reports. Now dear students, let us summarize this module. Whenever any crime has been committed or whenever any crime is committed, investigators are usually confronted with the assignment of determining the responsible individual for the crime as in many cases the identity of the perpetrator is unknown. A full embrace of the scientific method and its underlying philosophy is the best way to ensure competent methodology, findings, reasoning and interpretations. This require forensic scientists who objectively and skeptically employ the scientific method. Philosophers of science think about the scientific method. Basic research scientists use it to generate knowledge. Applied scientists typically study the knowledge that the scientific method has managed to accumulate. Forensic examiners must recognize the ethics, practices and perspectives of science including the scientific method. Expert evidence presented to the court should be and should be seen to be the independent product of the expert uninfluenced as to form or content by the exigencies of litigation. An expert witness should provide independent assistance to the court by way of objective unbiased opinion in relation to matters within his own expertise. An expert witness should state the facts or assumptions upon which his opinion is based. Thank you.